Hi everyone, it's Graham again and welcome back to my channel. So today I am here with part five of my February book haul. Part five. Let that sink in. Five book hauls in the shortest month of the year. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. And you're also probably thinking, he's wearing the same clothes day in, day out. I'm filming lots of videos in one day. You're just seeing them at different times. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not, I'm not tinky. I don't, I don't smell. I have just had a shower today. Um, and I've been filming for about three hours. So yeah, this is my final video I need to film today. That's exciting. Um, I have seven books to show you in this haul and uh, let's dive straight into those. So the first one is a book that I purchased from um, Sussex Downs Books. I will pop their information down below in the in that section down there. Um, and it's the Sherlock Holmes Companion. This is a gorgeous 1960s book that when I saw it, I had to have it. Um, it's, a, it's like a who's who um, of all characters within the story. And when I was looking through the book, there's this like really cool order form for a book that is also about uh, Sherlock Holmes. It's like a, a biography. And some of the, the points that it says, uh, where was Sherlock Holmes on the night of the 10th of November, 1888? Oh, that's the date of a Jack the Ripper murder. Why did Sherlock Holmes refuse a knighthood? Where was he born and when did he die? And we've got a visit from a dog. Hello, Toby. Hello. Are you coming in? Are you coming in? No? Go on. Go on. Here you go. I'm, I'm looking really forward to this one. Sherlock Holmes and Dr Watson are among the most famous characters in fiction throughout the world. And such is their vitality that they have assumed the reality of flesh and blood. Their world and all the levels of society they moved in, the clients, the criminals, the background of 221B Baker Street and gaslit London have become, a re have become so real that every detail concerning them is important. This indispensable companion brings together all the ingredients, a who's who, plots of each story, biographies of Holmes and Watson, an anthology of their aphorisms and a chapter on their, on their relation to Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, their creator. It was Sidney Paget who first portrayed the main characters of the Holmes saga and indelibly established their features. For too many years, his illustrations have been unobtainable except in second-hand copies of the Old Strand magazine, which I have a couple of editions of and I'm very proud to have them in my collection. Their use in this book will fill old admirers with nostalgic delight and be an additional temptation to those lucky enough to be approaching 221B Baker Street for the first time. The authors are both members of the Sherlock Holmes Society. Uh, Michael Hardwick's ad ad adaptations of Sherlock Holmes stories for radio broadcasting on the BBC have been broadcast by more overseas stations than any other programme. So these, the book is... Uh, Sherlock Holmes Companion by Michael and Molly Hardwick and it looks like that and I can't wait to, to dive into this. Um, oh, where am I going to put it? There's so many books on this bed from all these videos I've been filming, my goodness. So the next one is a book that I was sent by the publisher. Um, I'll pop the name of the publisher down on the screen below um, and I was sent this for review. This is a finished copy. Um, and it's just lovely, and I can't wait to get to it because it sounds superb. It is Trading Secrets, a novel by Rachel Eccles. This tells the story of a young woman who works in Wall Street and there happens to be murder and mayhem. There is no synopsis on the back. There's just some, um, some praise for the book. Um, a fast paced thriller that takes readers on a wild ride of revenge and intrigue. Readers will find this to be a compelling and satisfying page turner. And I can't wait to get to it because it sounds really up my street. Um, mm. The next one is this gorgeous first edition of this. Um, and I'm so lucky to have found this online. When I found it, 
I snapped it up. It had to be mine. It is Music for Chameleons by Truman Capote. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I believe that this was written towards the end of his life because, yeah, he looks quite unwell on the back, poor thing. But this has stories uh, in it. Let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Stories in it like... A list of stories would be good. So, Music for Chameleons, uh, Mr Jones, La A Lamp in a Window, uh, Hospitality. Um, there's also a story in here called A Beautiful Child, and I'm sure that that's about Marilyn Monroe, because he and Marilyn Monroe were quite friendly together. Um, supposedly, the story goes that he originally wanted Marilyn Monroe to play Holly Golightly in Breakfast at Tiffany's, but ultimately, um, and probably best for the for the film because it turned out amazing. Um, Audrey Hepburn plays Hollywood Lightly. Uh, this I'm so excited to get to. This is Truman Capote's first book in seven years, a superb collection of 14 new pieces all written in the last two years, including the short non-fiction novel Handcrafted Coffins, which already has caused tremendous excitement. In Handcrafted Coffins, the centrepiece of this new book the author of In Cold Blood once again focuses on the brutal crimes of a real-life murderer. Here, Capote tells the true story of a series of killings in a, in a small midwestern town in the United States with, uh, sorry, and of the detective who became obsessed with tracking down the murderer from the, most, from the moment he laid eyes upon the first two victims, a husband and wife who had been killed in the most horrific manner. Writing with remarkable spareness, power and simplicity, Capote has fashioned a masterly, suspenseful tale that will take its place alongside the, his great bestseller, In Cold Blood, as a classic American crime documentary. In a striking, stylistic departure from In Cold Blood, the author himself figures as an important character in the story. Music for Chameleons also contains short stories, although only... Moga Moha Mojave? Mojave could be called conventionally fiction, fictional, and seven conversational portraits ranging from a touching perceptive portrayal of Marilyn Monroe, a beautiful child, to, hilarious, to a hilarious account of a day the author spent accompanying a professional cleaning woman on her rounds in the city, a day's work. That sounds so, so good. And again, I'm so happy to have this beautiful first edition in my collection. Um, it's just gorgeous. I love it. So the next one I have is uh, one that I've heard really good things about. And it's by an author that I still have. No, in fact, I've read two books by her. Um, I've read Where... It's up on the shelf there. Where Snow Angels Go and Hamnet love it so much. Maggie O'Farrell um, and the book is called The Hand That First Held Mine. This just sounds glorious. Um, I'm sure Simon Savage has spoken about this book as well. I th I'm, I'm sure he said that it was the book that got him into Maggie O'Farrell. Fresh out of university and in disgrace, Lexi Sinclair is waiting for life to begin. When the bohemian, sophisticated Innes Kent turns up by chance on her doorstep in rural Devon, she realises that she can wait no longer and leaves for London. There, at the heart of the 1950s Soho art scene, Lexi carves out a new life for herself, with Innes at her side. In the present day, Alina and Ted are reeling from the difficult birth of their first child. As Alina struggles to reconcile the demands of motherhood with her sense with her sense of herself as an artist, Ted is disturbed by memories of his own childhood, memories that don't tally with his parents' version of events. As Ted begins to search for answers, so an extraordinary portrait of two women is revealed, separated by 50 years. Lexi and Alina are connected in ways that neither of them could ever have expected. The Hand That First Held Mine is Maggie O'Farrell's richest and most rewarding book to date a tour de force from one of our most acclaimed and best-loved novelists. I cannot wait to get to this because it just sounds glorious. Two different time periods interconnected. 
it's kind of given me girl women other vibes by Bernadina Everisto just the, the sort of interconnected weaving together of, of two women's stories although that one was about 12 women interconnected but it just has that kind of feel about it and I hope I'm not wrong I'm so excited about this one so the next two that I have are folio editions which I found online and which I couldn't be without um, this one doesn't have its original slipcase but I don't care it's beautiful I think this one's from like the early 90s um, it's all stuck together there. So this is uh, from 1992, but it's a reprint from 1995. And it has stories, um, <clears throat> The Pot of Caviar by Arthur Conan Doyle, The Cost of Kindness, uh, The Service of Love uh, by O. Henry. Uh, the Cost of Kindness was by Jerome K. Jerome. The Deal, A Deal in Old Masters by Aldous Huxley. Honeysuckle Cottage by P.G. Woodhouse. And I do realise I forgot to tell you what it is. It's short stories from The Strand, so The Strand magazine, um, which made uh, Sherlock Holmes famous. And it's just gorgeous, isn't it? It's just beautiful. Like some silhouette of someone standing in a doorway and it's very sort of mysterious. And the back has a similar feel to it as well. And the next one is also a... Folio Society. This does have its dust jacket and it's this gorgeous sort of gold kind of metallic feel um, and it's adventure stories from the Strand and it's just gorgeous as well and then the back is like that and there's a tiny bit of damage I think there's like water damage or something but again I don't care I love it um, and this one has stories in it um, uh, we've got How the Brigadier Came to the Castle of Gloom by Arthur Conan Doyle, uh, The Adventure of the Cantankerous Old Lady by Grant Allen, uh, the, Lord, the, Land, sorry, the Land of Ironclads by H.G. Wells, um, do, 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 with anything else that I would recognise, um, Mirage by W. Somerset, Somerset Maugham, Pyjamas by Sinclair Lewis, um, The Magic Tour, Sapper, the Last Journey, William C. White, and uh, Driver, Hilton Brown. But there are many more stories in both of these books, um, which I haven't read out. But like I say, these don't ha really have a, a synopsis on the back. They're just what they are, and they're just gorgeous pieces of literature. And I can't wait to get to these and add them, indeed, to my Folio Society collection, which I have quite a few now. And the last one that I have to show you is a book from 1900. I got this from Sussex Downs Books and when I saw it, it had to be mine. I just had to have it. It's called Chatterbox. And isn't that just delicious? It's just beautiful. It's a children's book, um, so it's middle grade. Middle grade from 1900. And it has lots of stories and gorgeous artwork. So that's a table of contents right there. And I think that the table of contents also possibly, no, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's just that one page. Okay. Oh no, <laughs> it does, it does. It goes on to the next page. Um, but yeah, it's lovely. Um, <clears throat> so let's see what stories we've got. <sighs> a kitten's game with a pelican, a little tragedy, a military dog, a novel duel, an oyster rat catcher, <laughs> A roadside caravan, a rustic bridge, a sledge express, um, homes and haunts of bats, and many, many more. It's got this sort of gorgeous gold sprayed edges. And for being 121 years old, it's in superb, beautiful condition. Um, and I love it. The back has, I don't know if it picks up, but it's got this gorgeous sort of leafy flower design. And let's get some more artwork. It's got a really good one. Okay, so I just I just love it so much. It's so so beautiful. I just I think it's great. It's very reminiscent, I feel, of like the Strand magazine, but for children. And I think it's just fab. And I'm so happy to have it in my collection. So that is the end of my part five of my February book haul, part five. 
goodness gracious. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. Whatever you're doing, I hope you have so much fun doing it. Whatever you're reading, I hope you love it. Stay fabulous, be amazing, be yourself, stay safe, and I'll see you again soon for another video. Bye-bye. <laughs>